years ago, we lost Jesse Palmer. So, yeah. personally, how do you think she did portraying Mrs. Voorhees, and how was she, like, how was it working with her? I didn't do a lot of work with her, um, because I, I, you know, I handed in the final drafts, and, um, uh, and I went to the set only once. Uh, I couldn't afford to be on the set, because I uh, still needed money to live, so I was back right. working in Connecticut. Um, but I did go, if I remember correctly, Estelle Parsons was originally supposed to do that role. Uh, and then there was a, at the last minute, there was some kind of conflict where she had to do something else instead. And so Sean said, come on, we're going to go uh, meet Betsy Palmer. So uh, I drove with Sean over to Betsy Palmer's house, which was fairly close to both of us. And uh, I met her in her house and she greeted me with great warmth and effusiveness and said, oh, I love your screenplay. It's such wonderful grand guignol. And um, it, had, having a master's in theater, I knew that grand guignol was that French sort of um, horror place where they had blood dripping from every part of the stage. Oh and I, so that made me feel great. And then, of course, um, fast forward to when she did the, uh, I, I guess it was the Warner Brothers version of whatever the, the uh, the add-ons to the DVD, um, and she said, "I read this." She said this in an interview. I read the screenplay, and it was a total piece of shit. Um, <laughs> and so, when I was on a panel with her once, I said, "Betsy, you know, you, you were you came on so wonderfully to me, and said it was great, Grand Guignol, and then you said it was a piece of shit." And she said, "Well, I needed a car." Right. And, I, and so she said, "I just want to lose the job." <laughs> um, but I loved, I loved her dearly, and I think her performance, I'm so glad, that's one of those things about fate, um, I'm so glad it was she and not Estelle Parsons, because, boy, did she get it. I mean, she yeah. just, uh, she went in there, and she wasn't phoning it in. It was real, and when, right. when in that moment where she said, um, you know, he wasn't a very good swimmer, um, and I just went, wow. Yeah, I mean, the woman was a consummate actress, and she—I think she's one of the the reasons that Friday the Thirteenth uh, was as successful as it was. She, uh, when that whole story, when she gave the story about Jason, it gave me chills just seeing yeah. how it was like you understood her grief and you you felt that that she has this grief that happened all these years ago, and she still has the grief that she misses her little boy. And that's not easy to do with that few words. I yeah. Mean, the, that's a consummate actress who can do that. And, of course. Uh, and so, as my actor friends tell me, you know, it's what's what's important is the is what you do between the lines. Yeah. And she just filled up moments and the silences and oh. Definitely. And when, then when she vocalized Jason, kill him, mom, yeah. kill him. Oh God. It was, it was phenomenal. Fun. You could tell that she that like when you see her, she's she is grieving her son. She she's crazy. But she doesn't care. She just wants her son back. And she wants payback. Exactly. She wants to avenge her son's death. That well, should have never happened. I mean, in, in, her, in her favor, um, she also she's protecting future generations. That's true, too. <laughs> yeah. Can you give us any thoughts or insights on your experience working on Friday the 13th? Any thoughts you haven't talked about now? Anything? Any experiences? Um, not really. I mean, uh, you know, it was it was a um, it was a really insecure time financially and every other which way uh, because there I was working on spec in the hopes that Sean would be able to raise the money. Right. And so there was no promise of cash, and uh, not until um, after uh, way after I'd done a first draft. So um, it was it was not a Wonderful time until uh, until I started getting paid. Right, <laughs> but it was it was fun for me because I I had always been I now mean, I got to use all the terrors in my own life and uh, because um, oh I uh, I used all of my nightmares all of my terrors as a child in the thing I mean I was always looking under my bed uh, right. for somebody under there until I was about eleven or twelve and. Uh, so I put somebody under the bed, and notwithstanding that Mrs. Voorhees was superhuman to be able to, <laughs> to put an arrow up through the, the springs, the mattress, 
his spine and out his chest. But <laughs> hey, you know, and uh, and getting an axe in the face was certainly um, well, not. I didn't. I wasn't afraid of getting an axe in the face, but I was always. I didn't want somebody to punch me in the face. I thought that was yeah. terrible. So I said, what's worse than a fist? An axe. Okay. <laughs> that is true. And That's very of course, true. Tom Savini made all that stuff work incredibly well. Yes. So, it's a, it was a team deal. To hear the rest of my interview with screenwriter of Friday the 13th, 1980, Victor Miller, you can order my book, The Ultimate Slasher Movie Encyclopedia. For details on when the book is released, please like my fan page on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash smccoyauthor.